These are a few of the drum kits that some of the biggest producers in the world use. And I promise when doing this, you will save so much time looking for presets. Here's a trick that literally makes this VST 10 times better. And this is the most important thing to note from this entire tutorial. All right, what's good YouTube? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be going over tips and tricks that will significantly improve both your drum and melodic sound selection. This tutorial is gonna be broken down into various parts. First, I'm gonna go over VSTs to use for every type of sound, the best libraries and expansions for each, the best drum kits to use and how to find them, some producers go to drum kits, various tips and tricks, and overall how to browse presets efficiently and effectively. Also, if you want any of the drum sounds or samples that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description where you can download them completely free. So let's talk about finding presets. So when it comes to finding presets, similar to what I talked about in the J. Cole tutorial, you want to be as efficient as possible because it can be a frustrating process and a big part of being a successful producer is being efficient when making your music. So I'm going to go over tips to be more efficient when looking for presets. So let's start with selecting VSTs. Choosing the right VST to search all depends on what type of sound you're looking for. Certain VSTs are best used for certain types of presets. So I'm going to go over the five most used VSTs individually and talk about which presets each specializes with, as well as banks that I recommend searching through. So for Electra X, I'd recommend this VST when looking for arps, bell, and any sort of synth lead sound. I wouldn't recommend it, however, for pad-like sounds, and especially dry sounds. As for banks, I just strongly recommend searching through the default ones. There are quite a few good expansion packs though. I'd strongly recommend the bass gutta, Roy Major, and Halfway Banks, as those have a lot of presets with the sound design in them. As for Nexus 2, I find Nexus is best used for lead, pluck, or like bell sounds airy pads, as well as keys, specifically pianos. However, I wouldn't recommend it for arps and dry sounds, as there's way more VSTs out there which are far better for these. As for banks, all the default ones are really good, but for expansions, I do recommend these DRZA expansion packs, as Metro, TM, and Southside use them a lot. Also, if you don't have it, I'd strongly recommend getting the Dance Volume 1 XP, as it has what I think is the best bass preset out there, being the well-known Prid sidechain bass. As for purity, I find that's best for all forms of dry sounds, which has become far more trendy nowadays. I'd specifically recommend it for dry lead, flute type sounds, cheesy piano sounds, and most of all dry pluck sounds. I wouldn't recommend it for wet sounds, specifically airy pads, as well as synth basses and arps. As for Expand 2, I find that above all the other VSTs, it's best for like pad layered sounds, just stuff that you layer on top of your melodies to give them more body and energy. It's also a pretty good alternative to purity if you don't have it. However, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone looking for any sort of experimental presets, as everything in here here is pretty generic. Here's a trick that literally makes this VST 10 times better. When looking for presets, come down to the bottom of the VST and browse through the banks here. You'll notice when doing this that there's a significant amount of presets that you can't find when browsing using the default browser. And doing this will double the size of your preset library. And last but certainly not least, for Omnisphere, honestly it's good for everything. I find this VST is really good for analog sounds and key sounds. Finding presets in Omnisphere is more about knowing how to efficiently browse through them. Here's a cool trick that I discovered for finding the best presets. Whenever you come across a certain preset that you like or find yourself using a lot, come up to the top left of the VST and click save preset as. Then name the sound starting with what it is and its traits. So for example, something like arp, airy choirs, keys, retro piano, bells, sharp delay. And what you'll do over time is create your own library of sounds that you like. So if the preset is still not exactly what you're looking for, what you want to do is come over here and hit this sound match option. And you just want to browse through presets here until you find one closer to what you're looking for. Then what you want to do is click match current selection up here. So now what it'll do is sound match based off this new preset that we found. Then you want to keep repeating this process until you get the exact preset that you're looking for. As each time that you do this, it'll significantly narrow down all the presets that match the attributes that you're looking for. And trust me, doing this will save you so much time and make finding the perfect preset so much easier. Also, be efficient when browsing for presets. I've seen so many producers, including myself, struggle with this. When choosing a preset, you need to be a assertive whether or not that preset is the one. If you're already questioning the way it sounds, you should just move to a new one. And don't get lost in this idea that you can save it by adding all these little EQs and effects, because in the span of time that you do, you probably could have just found another preset that honestly will sound better than whatever the heck you've made. Also understand the difference between lead sounds and layer sounds. Lead sounds stand out from the rest of the beat and are generally the sharpest sound in the beat. Layered sounds are usually the softest and usually have the least dynamics. So don't be creating leads with soft airy pads 
sounds that just sit in the background, and don't be layering these sounds with sharp ones, as that defeats their purpose. And in general, understand the type of beat that you're making and the sounds that associate with it. Like in general, every beat or melody that you'll make will have some sort of association with a certain sound or style from another beat, and there's nothing wrong with taking inspiration from other music when making your beats. You don't necessarily need to use identical presets, but you can still copy that general style and make it your own. But that's it for melodic sounds, so let's talk about drum sound selection. So right off the bat, make sure you have some sort of EQ on your master. It'll make the frequencies that count stand out so much more when searching for sounds, and it'll make it easier to hear the little imperfections in each drum preset. This is going to be a preset in my up and coming drum kit, which comes out tomorrow night by the way. So it's important to understand that there's a perfect balance when it comes to choosing drum sounds. A lot of people will tell themselves that for drum sounds, they need to be original and not use sounds that everyone else has. But there's reasons that those combinations of like the spins 808 and rack kick or Lex Luger clap and B Weezy snare are used so often because they work. Now you shouldn't strictly use generic combinations every time or use strictly experimental sounds, but you should understand how to find a balance between the two as every beat requires different types of sounds. Here's a concept I was taught a while back that explains this. So you can have a perfect sandwich with high quality, well balanced ingredients. But if you add one outdated expired topping, it's just going to make the sandwich suck and ruin all the other toppings no matter how good they are. The same logic applies to using different sounds from different genres and styles. Peanut butter and jelly as well as ham and cheese are two perfectly balanced toppings that work well together. But that doesn't mean that peanut butter and cheese or a jelly and ham sandwich would work. They're just complete opposites and different types of sandwiches overall, or in this case genres of music. So they're never going to work well together. So in the case of like drum sounds, don't be making trap beats out of drum sounds coming from like an R&B or like dubstep drum kit. Stick to the sounds that work, but still experiment by going through drum kits for that genre, adding similar sounds with different styles and creating something unique out of it. Also, don't be afraid to use drum sounds from a beat similar to the one that you're making or from a producer that has a style similar to that beat. Everyone already uses the same sounds and presets, so don't feel guilty for doing the same. And don't let some people tell you that like, oh yeah, you gotta be original because you can still be original, but drums are a fundamental thing to get right, no matter the genre of music. So it makes sense to use fundamental drum kits, right? And mimicking the style or sound that inspires you to make music is where every producer starts. So study the producer you want to sound like, learn what drum kits they use. From the top of my head, these are a few of the drum kits that some of the biggest producers in the world use. I know practically everyone uses the BWB kits, Scrim uses the Creep drum kits, Metro uses the Zay, Lex, and Polo Boy kits, Nick Mara uses the Audio Crack Dealers kit, Jetson Maid uses the Big Head drum kit, and Pierre uses the Jug drum kit. So if my beat sounds like it was made by one of these producers, I'd probably use those drum kits. So let's talk about browsing drum kits. So a big tip that I would advise is try making a basic drum pattern first. Just get the general pattern down and only then browse for presets. Also, this is a big secret that changed sound searching for me altogether. If your mouse has side buttons like this, highlight whichever section you're browsing in the pattern block and browse through kits using the side buttons as they will automatically change the sound that you've highlighted. And you don't need to spend all that time dragging and dropping sounds to listen to them. Another huge tip is that when looking for 808s and kicks, try having the melody play on loop as you search because you can't truly notice whether an 808 or kick will work until you actually have it playing in the beat. As certain frequencies in a melody will make certain sounds hit harder, so you shouldn't be browsing for kicks and 808 presets separately or expecting certain sounds to just work. As for searching like based off characteristics, the only thing that you should know is that as I've said in the uptempo bangers tutorial, higher tempo beats generally have tighter sounds and slower tempo beats generally have looser sounds. So keep that in mind because that might be a reason why your drum sounds aren't working. And this is the most important thing to note from this entire tutorial, create your own drum kits. Listen to your own beats, take the ones you like, go into their project files, and save those drums into a kit. And slowly as you start to do this, you'll notice that there's certain sounds that you use a lot, as well as trends in the sounds and drum kits that you use. Then you'll start to narrow your drum kits and sounds down to only the good ones. Some kits won't, and if that's the case, make sure to just save the files that you like from that kit in your own stash of drum sounds, and then always make sure to delete that drum kit afterwards. You want to avoid having an overwhelming amount of drum kits because it will make looking for good sounds harder and you'll often forget which kits you should use and which you shouldn't. Save the specific sounds you like and delete the rest. Like for example the kits that I have were selected out of hundreds of different drum kits that I've gone through. Some of these kits I've been using for years now and some of them I've only been using for a couple of weeks. Also over the span of time I've made eight different personal drum kits that I've been constantly narrowing down to just a few sounds that work together perfectly and I use these sounds in like 90% of my beats now. And by the way I'm actually selling that kit. It's going to be called the Finna Finesse Most Wanted Drum Kit Volume 1. That kit will be out sometime tomorrow night. Also, I'm going to be giving away five versions of
of the kit early on my Instagram. I'm giving away four versions of the kit and one exclusive deluxe version that only myself and one other person will have. So make sure to go check that out. All you have to do is follow my Instagram, like the post that will be up sometime late tomorrow, and leave a comment. Yeah, but that's it for this tutorial. Let me know what you guys thought, what you want me to do next in the comments. And if you have any feedback, let me know. Follow my Instagram and Twitter at Finn of the Gods. Most one drum kit comes out tomorrow night. Make sure to like, subscribe, and peace. Thank you.